Welcome to my Vision Express patient communications video walkthrough. By the end of this video walkthrough, you'll know how to set up and use patient communications in its entirety. But before we get started with the setup and use of patient communications, I want to go over what it is and why you'd want to use it. So we're briefly going to touch on some key points. Patient communications allows you to easily and automatically engage with your patients at all times. You're going to automate the voice, email, and text message communications of your office, which streamlines your workflow and increases your revenue. By reducing no-shows through scheduled advance appointment reminders, as well as reminders on the day of the appointment, you'll lose no staff productivity. You'll also improve your existing patient relationships with follow-up emails and text messages, and build your practice's reputations with built-in surveys that lead to reviews on sites like Yelp and Google, which will also help you attract new patients. With that said, we're going to move on to setting up using patient communications. Setup for patient communications can be accomplished in three steps. Tell My Vision Express when to send the messages, what messages to send, and who to send the messages to. We're going to start with when. We're going to go to File, Setup, Company. And once the Company Setup window is open, we're going to choose our Location tab. And from our Location tab, we're going to set the time in which we want our communications to send. If you have more than one location, you will want to set it up for each location. So here I'll move on to our next location and go ahead and set the time I want the patient communications to send here as well. Now this is going to control any automated messages that we've set up. Once we're finished with all of our locations, we'll click Save. And the system will prompt us and let us know that our changes will be saved once we restart. So we'll go ahead and restart. And next, we're going to move on to what. Once we've restarted, we're going to need to go back to File, Setup, Company. And this time, we're going to need the System tab. From the System tab over in the right corner, there's going to be a section called Other Settings. In these other settings is where we're going to set up our URLs for our Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google, etc. This is going to be your URLs that you have to these specific sites if you have them. If you don't have all of these websites up and running for your, um, for your practice, you don't need to fill in this information. Once you've done this, you'll hit save. Once again, you'll need to restart. Once we've restarted, we're going to go to File, Setup, and communications. This is where we're going to designate what types of messages we'll be sending, whether they're email, text, or voice messages. You can either sort here at the top by the different category headings, or alternatively, you can right click and filter. That's what I'm going to do here and choose first emails. Here I see all of the emails that are available to send. The first email I want to set up is going to be my layout email. I'll click layout and then click modify template. Here I'll see my editor open up, and this is where I can go ahead and set up what I want my layout email to look like. This email is going to control what everything around it, what all the templates actually, I'm sorry, are going to look like. This is the frame around your emails. Here you'll see that it works much like any word processor that you've um, used in the past. You have your bold, italics, underlines, etc. If you are more well versed with um, HTML and CSS, you can click on the source button and manipulate the C uh, HTML and CSS to fully customize all of your emails. Clicking on source again will take you back to the editor mode and you can go ahead and change anything that you want here. For example, if you don't have an office website URL, we can go ahead and select it, click delete on our keyboard and remove it. To add it back, we just go ahead and select one of the merge fields up at the top and just click on the merge field that we want to bring in. For example, we'll bring back our office website URL. We see that the font's a little bit different, so we'll match up our fonts here by selecting the same font as the other ones. We may also want to change our logo, so we'll go ahead and do that by clicking on the current logo and just hitting again delete on our keyboard. We'll go up and click on the button for an image, click on it, and it will bring up our image dialog box. If you know the URL to your image, you can go ahead and enter it in. Or if you want to upload an image, you can go ahead and do that as well by clicking Browse. You select, it'll take you to your file explorer, and you can choose the image that you want to use by clicking it and clicking OK. We see that it inserts the image there. This template content merge field is important to keep in our layout. This is what's going to tell the email to bring in your template content here. 
Now let's say we don't like this particular template. We can choose a different template from the library by clicking on Choose Different Template. And here we see we just have different color options available. In this case, I like my option, my blue, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel. If I want to insert a different one, for example, this yellow one, I would click Insert Template. Here I can save my template, and then I just close out my box up here at the top. Moving on, we're going to go on to our recall template and set that one up. So I'm going to go ahead and choose recall by clicking on it. And here I see a checkbox for active. This active checkbox, one just selected, is going to just designate that this email will send. Down here in the timing section determines when the message will send. In this case, we can set it to send as many hours, days, weeks, months, etc. before um, the visit. In this case, I'm going to leave it at one month before. Then I select Modify Template. Here I see the template that can be modified. I've got everything entered here. If I want to change anything, I can just change what it says. For example, if I don't want to say Dear Patient First Name and instead I want to address the patient by a title, I can insert the merge field for Patient Title, Patient Last Name, and just put a space in between and then go ahead and edit the font so that it matches the rest of my fonts. Here I see that it will go to um, Dear Patient's Title and Patient's Last Name, for example, um, Dear Mrs. King. And we see here that we can also, there is a big button for Request Appointment. I can include this button if I'd like, or I can go ahead and remove it. Removing it is very easy to add it back. I can go ahead and click on the the, uh, the button up at the top for request appointment. It's going to insert my appointment wherever I put it, in this case in the center. So I request appointment, I type what the button want, what I want the button to read, in this case request appointment. I can change the color of the button just by using this little slider here to slide. I'll make it red so it's nice and noticeable and then just click add custom link. I can go up here at the top and just enter, um, hit enter on my keyboard so that it's spaced correctly. And here I want this to be aligned to the left, so I'll select it and just click on the align left button. Here I can preview what my email will look like in the template. And this is um, what your cu customer, or I'm sorry, what your patient will see. If you don't like that particular um, template, you can go ahead and click on so choose a different template from the library and select a different one. I'll show you what this email actually looks like in my email here. And let me also show you what happens when your um, patient clicks request appointment. They're going to get taken to this page where they can input their information, um, for example, their first and last name, date of birth, their email address and phone number. And they can also select which office and um, the appointment type that they'd like. Once they fill out all of this information, they'll click on send request. And after hitting send request, they'll get a confirmation. Now this confirmation does not make the appointment for them. It simply notifies your office that your patient would like an appointment. Where your um, staff members are going to see this is in the messages section. So if you click on messages from the toolbar and then click on unassigned only, you'll see here the message request, or I'm sorry, the appointment request that was sent by your patient. Your staff members can then contact the patient and make the appointment for them um, officially on the calendar. And then once they're done, they can delete the message so that it has been so that you'll know that it's been taken care of. It also sends an email to the address, um, the email address that you set up when you sign up for patient communications, letting you know as well. Next, we're going to move on to the advanced appointment reminder. I'm just going to click on advanced appointment reminder. It is already set to active, so I'll set my timing. In this case, I'm going to go for 14 days before, then click modify template. The reason I'm choosing 14 days before is because this is just an advanced reminder. We're simply letting our patient know that they have an appointment coming up. Uh, we're not going to include any buttons to have them confirm or anything, because again, this is for an advanced reminder. If everything looks the way I want it to, I can click Save, or in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click Preview so I can see what it will look like in an email. I'm actually going to show it to you in my email here by pulling it up, and this is what it looks like when it actually sent to me. Go ahead and close out of my email, and we'll move on to our next template type, 
which is going to be appointment confirmation. Now this one I will actually set to a few days before the appointment because I will invite my patient to either confirm or cancel the appointment if they'd like. Here first I'll just show you I can change my greeting. Once again um, I can change it from dear patient title and patient last name to let's say I want to just say greetings and the patient's first name. So I'll select patient's first name as a merge field and then of course I do want to make my fonts match so I'll go ahead and highlight it, select the font and in this case also the size so that they'll be the same size. And then I see here in the contents of my message that there's a button that says yes I'll be there. I can add a button for cancellation as well if I'd like. I do not have to. If you do not want to include a cancellation button then you do not have to at all. But in this case I'll go ahead and show you how to add one. Just entering in the text. In this case I have it say no I cannot make it. I'm also just going to change the color just to show you that it can be done. And then click add custom link. Now I see that there are two buttons here that when my patient receives the email they can either select yes I'll be there or no I cannot make it. Again you can have it say confirm and cancel or you don't have to include the cancel button at all. We'll save the email and let me show you what it looks like in my email here. Here I have an email with two buttons available. If I go ahead and click yes I'll be there then your patient or me in this case will receive this message that my request has been received. If you do have the confirmation email um, active then they'll also get a confirmation email immediately saying that their appointment has been confirmed. Now taking a look at the calendar here we see that the, because I confirmed this appointment that the status of the calendar has changed to confirm. Now this is going to be true also if I had hit canceled um, then this appointment status would read canceled. So whatever, if you allow the buttons in your email or even your text or voice calls, uh, the calendar is going to be automatically updated. In this case confirmed, in the case of cancellations it would say canceled. So I'm going to go ahead and close out my email and move on to my next uh, email type which is going to be the day of reminder. The day of reminder of course is going out the day of so you can set it to send one, two, three, how many hours in advance and of course select active if you want it to be active. Going to look at the template here, I'm going to modify it. I can choose a different template once again from the library. There are other templates to choose from. In this case I like this template so I'm just going to go ahead and click save and I'll show you what it looks like in my email. Here my email is the actual email that I received just reminding me that I have an appointment today. And before we move on from here I'm actually going to go back to modify template just to show you how to insert a map into your email address or into your email if you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter a few times and indicate our office is located at and then click on this little Google pin that we see in the menu bar. If I have a location address set up already it's going to fetch the address. In this case I don't have my location address set up so I will go ahead and type in my address location. I can set the width and height of my um, map here. Um, the width is going to be how wide it is and the height is going to be how tall it is and then I'll click OK. I see here that it's not as big as I would like. I can either click on it and stretch it if I like or click on it um, and click the pin again and type in a new width for my map. In this case I'll make it a little bit wider, a little bit taller, click OK and I see that my map is bigger. I'm happy with my map now so I'll click save. Anytime that my patient gets this email they can click on that map and they will get directions to the office. So now moving on we're going to move on to our appointment canceled email and this appointment template you can select other ones if you don't like the one that is there. In this case I do like my appointment template so I'm just going to go ahead and save it and then view it in my email. Now this email if set to active is going to send immediately when your patient cancels their appointment. Now this can be a manual cancellation where they call in and they cancel. If this um, email is active then they'll receive this email. It'll also send out automatically um, anytime that they hit the canceled button either via email, text, or voice. Moving on to our missed appointment, this is going to be sent out any time that your patient misses an appointment. That will be indicated by your staff indicating a no-show. Once again we can choose different templates and in this case I'm going to hit cancel because I like this template. I'll save it 
and then I'll show you what this email looks like in my email itself. This is an email that I got saying that I missed my appointment on this day. I'm going to go ahead and close out this email and we'll move on to our next email template, which is going to be our thank you email. You can set the timing for this to send a few hours after the appointment and this will just depend on the time after the appointment. Here we'll click modify template and see the template that's available. This is going to be um, a template that you can include a survey in. If you don't want to include a survey, you can go ahead and delete the survey button just by selecting and deleting it. And to bring it back, we'll just click on the review link button at the top and then um, type in what we want the button to read and then add it in. Add in a few spacers so that everything looks cor um, formatted correctly within the email itself. And then we preview it and see what it looks like. I'll show you what it looks like in my email after I save it here. We'll go to the email and we're going to click on take survey and see what your patient will see when they click on it. They can choose to post a review anonymously, select a rating, and then answer the question how likely they are to recommend your office. If the answer is 8 or greater, they'll get taken to an, another page that will allow them to post a review. They'll get thanked for their feedback and then click on an available link. These links are going to be determined by um, the settings that you set up in system settings that we did at the beginning of the video. So if they were to click on, let's say, for example, the Facebook icon, it will take them directly to the Facebook page where they can leave the review. Same will be true for Google, Yelp, Yahoo, whatever sites that you would like your patients to leave reviews on. Now, if they do not select a number of eight or higher, They get taken to a different page that asks them how their experience could be improved. They can fill out their information and once they hit send, you'll receive um, the feedback in several ways. The first way that you will be able to receive feedback is in an email. You'll get an email at the address that you would like to be notified on, um, indicating the reviews that you have gotten. You are also able to view them from within My Vision Express in two different places. The first place is within Messages. Clicking on Messages and choosing Unassigned, you'll see the reviews here uh, available for you. And then you can also go to Tools and Patient Reviews. Looking at Tools and Patient Reviews, you'll see a listing of all the reviews that you've received, whether or not the patient um, chose anonymous. If they did, it'll show up as anonymous. If they decided to leave their name, it'll be there. And you can see what their rating was and any comments that they may have left. All right, next we're going to move on to our Eyewear Ready email. Here we need to set up when this email is triggered. So once the notify status has been changed, I'm going to go ahead and set it to inspected. And then after the email is sent, what should the order status be changed to? In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose notify. I'll click on modify template and see here that this is a template that is defaulted. I can, of course, change this in any way that I want. Um, in this case, I'm going to make my font a little bit bigger. My patient needs glasses. Maybe they need to see this a little bit bigger. So I just selected all of my font. I'm just changing the size. I'll go ahead and save the email. And then I have an order already prepared. I'm going to go ahead and open it here. And I'll set it to inspected. Once it's set to inspected, I'll go ahead and click save. And momentarily, I will receive an email because this is going to send immediately upon an order status being changed, in this case to inspected. And here I've received the email. This email just lets me know that my, um, that my frames are ready. So I'll see that after this email has been sent, I'm going to go ahead and open up my patient history here and look at a history of all of my orders. In looking at the history of my orders, I see here that the status has been changed to notify. So using patient communications um, automatically does several things for you. It changes calendar notifications, and here we see it changes order notifications as well, or order statuses rather. Moving on, we're going to go to our eyewear follow-up um, email. In this email, you'll want to set to a few days, maybe a few weeks after your eyewear has been set to delivered, they'll get this email here. 
here we've formatted it. I kept the format that it had. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it within my email. This is just um, telling me that they, um, the practice hopes that I have enjoyed my new glasses. And if I need anything, please contact them. And that is going to bring us to our last email that we have available. And this is our birthday email. You can set it to send two weeks before, um, one day before, or however soon before you want the email to send out. And in this default template that we have, there's a birthday coupon included. If you do not want to include a birthday coupon, you can go ahead by all means delete it. But in this case, you'll just want to customize what the coupon says. And, um, for example, 20% off a complete pair of frames. You also want to change um, the terms and conditions of your offer as well. So if you want it to be valid for their entire birthday month or however it is that you want to do this coupon. Again, if you don't want a coupon, you can delete it. We'll preview it to see what it would look like in an email. And then go back to our editor and save this email. And we're going to look at what it looks like when I get it in my actual email. So here I have a sample email that I sent myself um, with the birthday coupon in it. Go ahead and close out of this. And that covers all of the email options that are available. You do not have to have all the emails active. Anything that you do not want to send, you would just not make active. We're going to go ahead and move on to text messages. And here we see all of the available text messages that we have. Text messages are pretty self-explanatory. Um, they work much the same way that emails do. You set your timing. If you want them to be active, you mark them as active. Here I'll just show you how to edit a text message. Um, most of the text messages you'll want to leave alone, unless you want to customize something like, let's say, instead of using the patient's first name here, we want to use a patient title and their last name. So we'll just use um, these data fields that we have here and choose, for example, patient title and then patient last name. We select the field, click add, and then put it in the correct place that we want it. Um, generally, whenever you place your cursor, wherever you place your cursor, rather, I'm sorry, is where the field is going to be added. So here I have patient title, and next I just need patient last name. So I will select patient last name and add and there it is. Again, when you place your cursor there, it will insert it there in this case. I didn't put it where it's supposed to be, so I'm just copying it and placing it where I'd like it to go. If I want to allow the cancellation of an appointment from the text message, I would select the Allow Cancel button. It adds in a line that um, it says Reply End to cancel the appointment. If I unselect the Allow Cancel, that line gets removed. Just to move on to the confirm appointment, I'm just showing you how you can change the days before or after. Um, if you have an email that is already set to send, you can three days ahead, maybe you want to send a text message two days ahead. It's up to you, or you may not want to send a text message at all. Um, going on, I'm just going to show you, you can copy a text message as well. Let's say we want to copy a confirmation appointment. I just select it and then click copy so I can have it send more than once. I can have it send two days before and one day before. Um, and that is completely up to me. If I want to delete, I just go ahead and delete. So moving through the rest of the text messages real quickly, just looking here, um, again, checking the active text box will make it active checking the or setting the timing um, lets the system know when to send these text messages and the allow cancel checkbox allows cancellation of appointments um, moving on here we've got the appointment confirmed you cannot set the timing on this because it's going to be immediate like we discussed earlier during the emails um, any time that an appointment is confirmed canceled uh, confirmed or canceled it automatically sends here for our eyewear ready, it's got the same um, triggers. The notify status is set to inspected, um, and then afterwards the message is changed to notified. Um, here in our missed appointment, once again, you can set your timing for how soon after the missed appointment. Here we've got a recall. Um, unlike in the emails, there's two different recalls here. You can have a recall to, to have them recall, to have your patient recalled um, a few months before it's time for their appointment. 
There is also a contact lens reorder um, text message that is available, and that just is based upon when their contact lens is set to expire. Then we have the second recall option, the appointment canceled, which again is an immediate. And then there is a custom text message that you can create because you can send custom text messages. If it is a promotional text, you do want to check off promotion. And then here we'll just use some data fields to show you how to import the data information in. So this is going to be the, comp the name of your company. And then you can input whatever information you'd like. So your company is having a sale on all progressive lenses through the end of the year. And there you have the message, um, your promotional text message that you can send out. Later on, I'll show you how you can send this out um, or who to send this out to or how you can select who to send this out to rather. Um, clicking the add stop button just inserts the verbiage for um, how your patient can stop their text messages. And again, we can copy this and create as many different messages, text messages as we would like. Um, for example, all frames may be on sale. You can go ahead and copy the message and just change whatever it is that's going to be on sale. And then we have our happy birthday message. You can set this to send um, as many days before or after as you'd like. And then we've got your confirm appointment. Um, and this one just invites your patient to confirm their appointment via text message. You can delete text messages um, that you were created that are custom or that you have copied. You cannot delete any of the messages that are shipped with the system. That takes care of our text messages. We're going to go ahead and right click and filter and move on to our voice type messages. Here we see that there are only three different types of voice messages. We'll start with the contact lens reorder message. You can set the timing for one month, one, two months, how many ever months before. Click active to make sure that this voice call is going to send and there is a transcript of what is going to be heard by your patients. For your confirmation um, reminder, this is going to send out um, if you want it for every three days before up until the day of the appointment, then you set a timing of three days to one day before. Or if you only want it to um, call once, you can just set it from three days to three days. That will only have the system call them once. The next one is going to be your recall message. It's going to be based on the first recall that is in the patient's profile. And you can have it set um, to a few months before your patient's due, due date for an appointment. Select active to make it active and your patient will get this phone call. Uh, lastly, we've got custom calls where you can record an MP3 format of a sound clip that you may want to send. Select that sound clip by choosing, clicking choose file. It brings you to your sound, to your file explorer. You can choose the file that you want played and that will be the message that your patient will hear when they receive a phone call. You can listen to the audio by clicking listen audio and then you'll type in the phone numbers that you want to um, have called. You can copy and paste from a list if you have a list um, that you have generated and you can just put each number on a different line. So here I just put in some pretend numbers. Once I click call, the system is going to call through all of these numbers. And that is going to take care of our voice calls. At the end of our setup, we do want to click save to save all of our changes that we've made and we're going to close out here. And now we're just going to go over each category of message that's available to be sent, how it can be sent, what triggers it, and the timing that we use to send these messages. We'll start with the advanced reminder, and this can be sent either via email or text. It is triggered by a calendar appointment. It will send either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before the calendar appointment date. We do recommend that you send it a few weeks before. The next type of message that can be sent is the appointment canceled message and it can be sent either via email or text. It is triggered by in a calendar appointment status and it is sent immediately upon a calendar appointment status being set to canceled either automatically or manually. What this means is if your patient cancels their, mess, uh, cancels their appointment either via an email message or a text message, um, if you allow that then their appointment is going to be automatically changed to canceled and if you have this type of message activated it will get sent immediately upon that cancellation. 
Manually means if your patient calls in and somebody in your office sets the appointment to canceled, then the appointment um, will be set to canceled. And if this message is active, the appointment will, um, this message will send out either via email or text if you have one or both active. Appointment confirmed works the same way, except for it is for confirmed status. So if your appointment again is changed to confirmed, this message will be sent if it is active. The confirmation reminder can be sent either via email, text, or voice. It is based on a calendar appointment and can be sent either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before the calendar appointment date. For voice types, the call will be made daily for the range set until the calendar appointment status changes. So if you want your patients to be called every day until they either confirm or cancel, you can set that up. The day of reminder is sent either via email or text. It is triggered by a calendar appointment and can be sent either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before the time of the appointment. Of course, um, it is the day of reminder, so we do recommend that you set it for a few hours before the appointment. Next, we move on to the missed appointment type of message. It can be sent either via email or text. It is based on a calendar appointment status and can be sent the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years after a calendar appointment has not been set to show. We do recommend that you send it a few hours after the missed appointment. The next message type is the thank you type and this can be sent via email. It is based upon a calendar appointment status, and if active, it will send either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years after a calendar appointment status has been set to show. Now, you can either do it hours or days after the appointment. The custom message type can be sent via text message. It is not triggered. It will automatically send once you designate the recipients via the letters module, which we'll see later on. The layout type is going to be an email. It doesn't have a trigger. The layout only controls how the emails appear when sent. That's the first type of message that we saw to um, customize in the layout. The contact lens reorder can be sent either via text or voice, and this message is going to be based on an order. It's either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before an order of contact lenses is set to is calculated to run out. And we calculate when an order is going to run out based upon its replacement schedule and the number of contacts that were bought. For example, if your patient buys a box of six contacts and it is a monthly replacement, then it's going to calculate that as a six-month supply. If you set this reminder to go out a month before, then it will go out a month before that six-month supply is set to run out. Moving on from there, we have our eyewear follow-up message type. It can be sent either via email or text. It's triggered by an order and will be sent either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years after an order has been delivered. We do recommend that it's like a few days or maybe even weeks after the delivery of your glasses. The eyewear ready message type can be sent either via email or text. It is triggered also by an order and it is immediately sent upon an order being set to the selected notify status. Typically that status is inspected. After the notification is sent, the notified status changes to whatever is selected and again that is typically notified. The birthday message type can be sent either via email or text. It is triggered by the patient's information and can be sent either a number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before for a patient's birthday. We typically recommend that it gets sent out for email types weeks before, for text messages a few days before. For the recall message type, that can be sent either via email, text, or voice. It is based again on patient's information and can be sent either the number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before a patient's original recall date. For this message, we do recommend a few months before so that your patient has time to contact you and set up their next eye appointment. And for recall two, it can be sent via text, and it is also based on patient information. Um, your patient information has two recall dates, so this is for the second one. This is, can be set for any number of hours, days, weeks, months, or years before a patient's second recall date. And again, we do recommend a few months, so once again, your patient has time to call in and make the appointment. And that covers all of the different message types, how they can be sent, what triggers them, and their timing. And this brings us to who. We need to define who the system is going to send messages to. Here I'm going to use myself as an example patient. Once the patient profile opens up, we'll see over here to the right there is a button called communications. Clicking on this button for communications 
all of your patients when you have patient communications activated are going to have these options checked off. So all emails, all send mail, um, all calls allowed. The only section that will not be checked off is going to be your text message section. And the reason for that is because the FCC um, regulates this and there are laws that say that you cannot send text messages to your patient without their written approval. So before you check off this checkbox for send text, you do want to make sure that you have um, your patient's consent to send them text messages. You see fields here for Facebook name and Twitter account. Those are just data entry fields for now. Um, you can gather that information if you'd like. Now that is everything that you need to do to set up who gets the messages. We're going to move on to some additional features. I'm going to go back to my patient profile here and show you how to send a one-time message to a single patient. Let's say my patient did confirm their appointment and they're running a little bit late. I can send them a quick message that says, hi, you know, are you on your way? And then go ahead and click send. This allows you to engage in a two-way conversation with your patients. So you'll receive a confirmation message that your message was sent. And when your patient replies, if they reply, this text message icon on the toolbar will get a little red circle on it indicating that there are new messages. And you can go ahead and select the message and click reply to reply to your patient and you can keep this up um, for as long as you'd like. We're going to go ahead and close out that window and head back over to the patient um, profile and choose our interactions tab. Here in our interactions tab we see that every message, every text message, every email, anything that happens in patient communications is recorded. You can view any emails that were sent automatically through the system by selecting the email and clicking view and um, for as many emails as have as have been sent and viewing the text messages they're right there for you to see. We'll go ahead and close out of our patient profile and now take a look at how to send out bulk text messages. We'll do that from letters. We'll go to file and letters and that's going to bring us to the search screen of the letters module. We'll search for all of our patients in this case or you can enter in specific criteria that you want to search for. Here I've searched for all of my patients and then I'll go ahead and click send SMS in the lower right corner. Here I'm just going to send out a bulk text message that says or we have a new phone number. You could in, um, realistically send out any promotional text messages, let's say you're having a sale or um, hey make sure you use up all of your FSA, whatever it is that you want to send out to your patients. You do want to remember that if this is going to be a promotional email that you check off the promotion text box. That way any of your patients who have indicated that they do not want to receive promotional text messages will not receive this text. Go ahead and click send and it's going to give you a confirmation indicating um, who did not receive the messages because they've opted out of text messages or because they are under the age of 13. And that is how you send out a bulk text message. Now the last feature that we're going to look at is reporting on patient communications. You can get to reports one of two ways by going to File, Reports, Report Portal. This will open up a window from which we can select the report that we're looking for. In this case it will be in orders and it's going to be the patient communications report. Once we have opened the patient communications report, we're going to set our parameters that we want to look at here. And for this example, we're going to look at um, our month to date, which is only the 5th of November here. But we're going to take a look at all of the different categories by clicking Select All. If you only wanted to look at one category, you could just select that category. And for type, I'm also going to hit Select All. so I can see all of my different types of messages that were sent. Here I see a little graph that breaks down by month and category, showing here that um, I sent you know, one birthday message this month, etc. And here this is what we call a drill down. If you click on the little plus sign to the left of the month and year, we can see the, the different types of messages. For example, birthday, custom, eyewear ready, and see what messages were sent. And this is one way to access the report. You can also access the reports by going to File, Reports, and choosing Text Messages. Now this report gives you a list of the um, text messages that were sent for a specified time period. Here I just click Search, and it's going to be, again, for or through month to date. 
and leave my category blank and click search. And I see here again November. I click on the plus line. It shows me that I've sent some custom messages. Click the plus line again and I see what messages were sent. And that is another way to look at the reports for patient communication. And that takes care of patient communication setup and use in its entirety. If you have any further questions or need support or want to sign up for patient communications, you can contact us at mvesupport.com and access either our live chat or our knowledge base as appropriate. You can also email support at support at myvisionexpress.com or you can contact sales at sales at myvisionexpress.com. Or if you'd rather call us, you can reach us toll free at 877-882-7456. Just choose the appropriate option that you need. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy using patient communications with My Vision Express.